We are continuing the chapter periodic table. This is a very big chapter and that's why I mapped this chapter into 15 points. And in previous class, still 9 I described now. We are starting from chap from point number 10 and it is duplet and octet. What is duplet? The condition of element having capacity to hold maximum 2 electrons in the outermost cell of their atom is called duplet. But the condition of elements having capacity to hold maximum 8 electrons in the outermost cell of their atom is called octet. Now I want to show with uh, example, look at this. This is let's say lithium. Lithium has got two cells, this first cell and this second cell. And it has two, two electrons in first cell and one electron in last outermost cell. But when it takes part in the chemical reaction, then it donates this electron to other and this cell now doesn't exist. Now, the outermost cell becomes this one. And this outermost cell has got two electrons and this is the condition of duplet. Thus, uh, it forms duplet in the chemical reaction. In the same way, look at this. This is the atomic structure of oxygen. And there are two cells. First cell has got two electrons. Second cell has got six electrons. Altogether, it has eight electrons. And when it takes part in the chemical reaction, normally, it gains electron from other. I mean to say it share electron from other. If it share two electron from other, then what happens? Now, number of electron in the outermost cell becomes eight and it formed octet and thus its, its outermost cell is satisfied. In this way, element takes part in the chemical reaction either to form octet or to form duplet and their outermost cell is satisfied. Now, Let's talk about representative elements. What is it? Representative element means the element of group 1a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a and 7a. They have incomplete number of electrons in the outermost cell. Their outermost cell is not satisfied with the electrons. And these elements are called representative elements. Now after this, we have to go through 12, 13, 14. But before starting 12, 13, 14, we must have a little idea how to write electronic configuration. That's why we must have a little idea about first 20 elements of the periodic table. I want to show you this table. Look at the table. Look at this table. You must remember the uh, name of the elements from atomic number 1 to 20, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, etc. up to what? Calcium. And you must remember in the order uh, and their atomic number and their symbol should also be remembered and you must remember their atomic weight also. This atomic number is necessary to write the electronic configuration and atomic weight is also necessary because if you are told to write atomic structure then you have to remember neutron also. Atomic weight minus atomic number gives you number of neutron and you will be able to write atomic structure also. That's why uh, you must remember this and then you will be able to start uh, to write this atomic structure and atomic uh, electronic configuration. You know that an atom has got many orbits K, L, M, N, O, P from inner side to the outer side or you can say first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, fourth orbit. These are the orbits or cell. But each of the cell is further divided into subcells. And what are these subcells? Look at this. These subcells are S, P, D, and F. S for sum, P for principle, D for diffuse, and F for fundamental. And S subcell can hold maximum 2, P subcell can hold maximum 6, and D, 10, F, 14. They can hold 2, 6, 10, and 14 maximum number of electrons. After the understanding of this much, now you will be able to write down the uh, electronic configuration but before writing the electronic configuration you have to know about the off-bow principle what is it off-bow principle this is a principle which gives the order of filling up of electrons in different soft cells and cell of the atom and look at this this off-bow principle is represented uh, noted by its notation look at this this represents that while filling up electrons in the uh, in different subcell, first you have to fill up uh, first cell as subcell, and then you have to go to second cell as subcell, 
and second cell P subcell and remaining electron goes to third subcell S uh, uh, third uh, cell S, uh, uh, S subcell and then remaining goes to third third cell P subcell and remaining goes to fourth cell S subcell in this way this is the order of filling up of electron according to above principle after this much understanding now we are able to uh, write the electronic configuration according to SPDF subcell. Now look at this. I made a table here. We are going to write the uh, electronic configuration of potassium. Potassium, as I told you, you have to remember from the table. Its atomic number is 19. That's why we have to fill up 19 electrons in different subcell. Now look at this above pr uh, principle. First we have to fill up in 1s, 1 first orbit s subcell, it, uh, it is 2, and second orbit s subcell, it is 2, and uh, second orbit p subcell, it is 6, and third orbit uh, s subcell, it is 2, and then third orbit p subcell, it is 6. Now we have to count also 6 plus 2 plus 2, 10, and 6, 16, 17, 18. Now only left, and we are now in 3p. After 3p, we have to go to 4s, not 3d. 4s, remaining only one goes to 4s, that is 1. This way, we can fill up this uh, electronic configuration. We can write electronic configuration. Now, if you want to write the same in other, other way, you can write this way also, 1s2, 1s2, and 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 2p6 and 3s2, 3s2 in the same way 3p6, 3p6 and 4s1, 4s1. Last electron entered into fourth, fourth cell as top cell. Now let's talk about bromine. Its atomic number is 35 but we don't have to go more than 20 atomic number but I want to show you how to fill up the electrons in different subcell. That's why I'm taking bromine. Bromine. Now, how to fill up? First, 1s, 1s2. And then we are going to 2s, 2s2, and 2p6, and then 3s2, and then 3p6, 3p6, and, and then 3, after 3p, we have to go to 4s, 4s2, and then we have to go to 3d. 3d 10 now we have to count also 6 plus 2 plus 2 10 and 10 20 and 30 now altogether 30 is filled up remaining 5 where it goes after 3d is goes to 4p and 4p can hold 6 but our remaining electron is only 5 that's why i'm writing here 5 last electron entered here and this way we can write bromine also look at this how to write this 1 s 2 1 s2 1 uh, 2 s2 2 p6 2 p6 and 3 s2 3 s2 and then 3 p6 3 p6 and then 3 d 3 d 10 and then 4 s2 4 s2 and 4 p5 this way we can write electronic configuration. There are two ways to write one but with the help of table, another in this notation. This way we can fill up domain. Now I want to go through iron also. Iron, its atomic number is 26 and that's why 1s2 and then 2s2 and then 2p6, now 3s2 and 3p6. Now after 3p we have to go to 4s. 4s2 now let's count 6 2 2 10 and 10 20 now remaining 6 and it's turn of what it's turn of 3d 3d can hold 3d can hold 10 but our remaining electron is 6 that's why i'm writing here 6 and last electron entered here now after this much understanding now you are able to write electronic configuration with the help of this table also you can write this way also but now the turn is about this blocks of element s p d f what are they s block element p block element d block element and f block element s block element the elements in which last electron enters into 
S subcell of the outermost cell is called S block element. In the same way, the element in which last electron enters into P subcell of the outermost cell is called P block element. But in case of D block element, the last electron enters into D subcell of the penultimate cell. Penultimate cell means not the outermost cell, second last cell. In F block element, the element in which last electron enters into F subcell of the antipenultimate cell. Antipenultimate cell means what? Not the outermost cell, not the second last cell. Third last cell is called uh, antipenultimate cell. And the last electron enters into F subcell of the antipenultimate cell. Previously, I told you that the last electron entered into this S subcell in case of potassium. That's why potassium is. S block element, not only the potassium, not only potassium, all uh, group 1A and 2A elements are S block element. If you are told to write example. Now, bromine, in case of bromine, last electron entered into P subcell of the outermost cell. That's why it is P block element. Not only this one, but 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, and uh, 7A, including zero group element. All these are P block element because last electron enters into P subcell of the outermost cell. Now, look at this uh, D block element. What I told you, last electron if enters into D subcell of the penultimate cell, look at this is the outermost cell is fourth in case of iron. Fourth cell is the outermost cell, but last electron enters into third cell and D subcell of third cell. That's why this is D block element. Not only this, the middle block of the periodic table is all uh, are all D block elements. And what is F block element? You uh, you are taught in previous class, lanthanides and actinides are F block element in which last electron enters into F subcell of anti penultimate cell. After this much understanding, let's talk about electronic configuration. In electronic configuration, how do we identify group, period, block, and valency? I mean to say, in examination, you might have this uh, expression, it may be given in question. And you are told to identify this element and group and block valency and period also. Now, how do I identify which element is this? You are you can count the subscript 2 plus 2, 4 plus 6, 10 plus 2, 12 plus 6, 18 plus 1, 19. This is the element having atomic number 19. This is potassium. In the same way, we can count in this case also, and if it is 35, it is bromine. If it is 16, this is another element. If it is 11, another element. In this way, atomic number of 1 to 20, you must remember, and it may come in the examination. This way, we can identify the element. Now, how do I identify group? You have to see the outermost cell. If an element contains uh, one electron in the outermost cell, it belongs to a group 1A. Two electrons in the outermost cell belongs to group 2A and three ele electrons in the outermost cell 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A. If seven electrons in the outermost cell, it is 7A. And if eight electrons in the outermost cell, it is zero group element. This way we can identify. Look at this. In this case, if this elect uh, electronic configuration is if given according to subcell, you have to find out the outermost cell. Which one is outermost cell? Four cell. And how much electron it contains? One. It means... Uh, it, it belongs to group 1A. In the same way, if this is given and you are told to find out the group, now which one is the outermost cell? Fourth cell. But fourth cell is outermost cell. There are two plus five, seven electrons in the outermost cell. That's why this element belongs to group 7A. Now, how to find out this period? Period means you can easily find out the period the maximum number of orbit you have to search how, which orbit is the last orbit, fourth orbit. And that's why it belongs to fourth period. Which orbit is the last orbit, fourth orbit. It belongs to uh, fourth period. This way, if there are three orbits in the, uh, in the electronic configuration, then it belongs to third period. This way we can identify period also. Now block. How to identify block? Block you can easily identify. Last electron enters into S subcell, S block, P subcell, P block, D subcell, D block. This way you can identify block also. Now valency. How to identify the valency? Actually, the valency of an element in this case you can uh, get it easily. 
when an element takes part in the chemical reaction either it donate electron or accept electron or share electron how many electrons are donated accepted or shared in the chemical reaction that represents the valency of that element now looking at this electronic configuration outermost cell contains one electron certainly it donate one electron in the chemical reaction its valency is one in the same way here outermost orbit has got seven electrons that's why it gains one electron from other that's why its valency is also one but in case of this oxygen it has six electrons in the outermost cell and it gains two electrons to form octet and that's why its valency is two this way you can identify the valency also the last point that is point number 15 what is it atomic radius of element and their reactivity look at this group 1a 2a 3a 4a 5a 6a and 7a i haven't taken group zero because group zero elements are inert gases they do not take part in the chemical reaction that's why i'm not writing here as we go from left hand side to right hand side in any period whether the second period third period fourth period fifth period atomic radius goes on decreasing why atomic radius goes on decreasing the number of valence electron goes on increasing valence electron means i think you know about this the uh, electrons in the outermost orbit is called valence electron because they declare the valency of the element as we go towards right hand side number of valence electron goes on increasing that's why many electrons are attracted by many protons so the atom goes on shrinking and shrinking and at last look at this if we start from lithium and insert fluorine the atomic radius of fluorine is very less because more number of electrons are attracted by more number of protons and that's why it shrink a lot this way atomic radius goes on decreasing what is its effect on the reactivity of the element as we go towards the right hand side atomic radius is decreasing that's why attraction between valence electron and proton goes on increasing because they are being uh, um, they are being very closer and closer that's why attraction between the electron and proton becomes stronger and stronger and if attraction is strong then tendency of donating electron this is the tendency of metal metal reacts by donating electron tendency of donating electron becomes weaker and weaker that's why metallicity goes on decreasing as we go towards right hand side but non-metal react by gaining electron the non-metallicity goes on increasing and that's why if there are non-metals in right hand side they are reactive and if metals in the left hand side they are reactive and the, why they are reactive non-metal gains electron and reacts that's that's why if radius is less they become reactive and metal uh, reacts by donating electron and that's why if radius is more then they have become reactive okay metallicity decreases non-metallicity increases but if we go down in any group then uh, atomic radius goes on increasing why increasing look at this is lithium this is our second period this is a third period this is a fourth period second period means it has two orbits third period means it has three orbits and fourth period means it has four orbit if number of orbit goes on increasing atomic radius also goes on increasing if atomic radius goes on increasing then the attraction between valence electron and proton becomes weaker and that's why if this is a group of metal then its reactivity goes on increasing as we go down in this group and in this group also they are metal magnesium calcium etc they are metals and their reactivity goes on increasing as we go down but in case of non-metal when we go down atomic radius goes on increasing that's why uh, the attraction between the valence electron and proton becomes weaker and weaker and the tendency of donating electron increases but they are non-metal they have to gain electron in the chemical reaction that's why the tendency of gaining electron goes on decreasing and non-metallicity decreases it means fluorine is more reactive than chlorine it means lithium is less reactive than sodium because it has to donate electron it has to gain electron in this way we can understand the effect of increase of radius or decrease of radius and it is effect on metals and non-metals this much for today I think more or less I finished this big chapter periodic table.